Welcome to the video guys. Today is the day before my birthday, which is 30th of April tomorrow. And today is also my dad's birthday, which is 29th, so his birthday is right before mine. Also, you guys will see this jacket a lot. When I was in London, I got this uh, suede jacket from Zara and I really love it. So you're probably going to see it like in the videos a bit. This Virginia done me off already. Oi! I'm blamed for real. Even though this song's old now, still love it. Anyway, people, this vlog is gonna be a bit more long, not long, it's gonna be a bit more length. Because the feedback I got of people off Snapchat said that they love the good edits I've been doing, but they like seeing more of me in the video as well. Uh, because at the moment, like with the kind of like quicker editing and all that, it kind of takes out the moments where I'd probably actually speak to the camera, speak to you guys. Uh, so you kind of lose out a bit of the personality, but you get better editing. So the whole aim is to try and get like a fine balance between the two. And let's get your gold no spray turn. You need to start running back to your ex in my weird man. Uh, but I was gonna say, um, hope you enjoy the 15,000 calorie challenge. Because as I'm filming this, basically it's not out yet. For sake! <laughs> Screwing in the car like this, this is the shit I do in my car all the time you guys don't actually see. Um, the 15,000 calorie challenge at this moment in time comes out tomorrow. So I don't know if you enjoyed it or not. I hope you enjoyed it because the editing on that took their piss to do. Like I mean it took the absolute piss, it took the absolute urine to do. Uh, but if you did enjoy it, please thumbs it up, comment on that video so I know. And thumbs up this video because it's my birthday tomorrow, my dad's today. And the 15,000 calorie challenge uh, went live finally so thumbs up both videos it makes sense in it DJ Khaled. yeah you're looking at the truth the money never lie no I'm the one yeah I'm the one early morning in the dawn know you wanna ride now this I'm the one yeah Stay tuned to when I show you guys the cake trust me you're gonna want to see I thought it was pretty damn cool when I saw it I was surprised I would show you now but I'm not gonna my hair looks a mess I need to get a trim so I'm all just pulled out money so I can uh, hopefully go to my barbers Failed. For a fact, if I stay in that shop any longer, it'd be like almost two hours because he's going so slow. Had to bail on that barber's, I was not waiting, too slow. There's only two people waiting for a trim, but the one guy in the chair has been in there for 20 minutes and he looks exactly the same. One's Jamaican, one's African, but for some reason they're talking about American tax. I don't know why, but they're taking the piece, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna wear hats and shit. This is how TJ shakes his sh no, I'm gonna finish that. Give me a leg day today. Is that all I come on star? She said konnichiwa. Anyway, back to a leg day today. Hopefully my first pain-free leg workout in a good while. Uh, obviously a lot of you have been following me for a while. You know I injured my back in November doing, more or less, I slipped a disc or some shit in my back. It took months for it to heal and every time I tried to go back, I ended up making it worse. So I ended up more or less just taking out deadlifts and squats out of my whole routine. So like, more or less, this is like my first official day going back to do it. I tried doing squats about two months ago when I started getting pain again, so I stopped. And deadlifts, I just kind of stopped completely. But I did at least twice last week and the pain didn't come back. So now I think it's time that I can move on to squats and hopefully I'll be fine. Those of you that follow my Snapchat, you know I kind of post routines on my Snapchat thing like of chest day, arm day, whatever. So um, today I'm doing the, the leg day one that I posted. Those of you might remember, it's got me in the corner of the picture and like a table next to it with all the sets and reps and whatnot. So I'm going to be following that today and hopefully it all goes well. Uh, I'm not going to obviously go crazy heavy because that'd be stupid but I'm going to definitely like at least do moderate to heavy weight when it comes to the squats and then I'm working in lunges back as a workout hands down in my opinion lunges is one of the hardest most underrated leg exercises there is it's very 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 hard I find it more painful <laughs> than squats to be honest um, so I'm going to be making sure to get those two out first so get the squats out then the lunges <laughs> Shout out to the sun, to the house, I'm trying to see if you can get a little help. I'm gonna 
right, session's done. Literally, I was planning on putting back on my shirt, but the shit was drenched, man. It was like, like leaving like a squeeze sweat out of it. So I was like, fuck all that. Ain't gonna get my car all sweaty. But yeah, oh god, it's literally so damn wet. Like, just drench worthy wet. Because I ended up ending on 400 calories. Like, normally I never ever go that high. But I was watching Chris Jones, I was enjoying the video, so I thought I'd stay on it. Plus, if you guys didn't know, like, throughout April, I've been doing like a very relaxed month. Like, kept been doing 10,000 calorie challenges, 15,000 calorie challenges. You know what I mean? So I've been very free in my diet. Which is why I did like the little physique update, just kind of see where my body's at. Because I know that I'm a good, like, seven, eight pounds higher than. I should be at the moment. I think this morning I weighed in like 161 pounds when realistically I should be more around the 157 to 155. So I may try to bring that down a little bit so it gets a little bit leaner close to body power. But in general, to be honest, I've enjoyed having like kind of like downtime to kind of do funny, kind of in what's called entertaining videos for you guys because normally when I'm trying to lean down because of this nine to five life I have, I can't really afford to be doing these crazy food challenges and work and then still try and fit in gym and be in a calorie deficit is too much. I'm sorry, I, I can't handle that. So I thought while I'm not really cutting down for anything specific at the moment, just maintaining, now is the time to do kind of fun videos. So it made sense. And going on to the title of this video. The title should be something along the lines of uh, Is YouTube your job? Is YouTube your only income? Or what is your job? Or how much do you earn from YouTube? Because these are questions I get asked all the time Like, and I find it crazy that some people out there truly believe that YouTube is my main source of income which is crazy like off the views I get do you really think I can support my lifestyle off, off, off that? It's, it's, in, it's bizarre and a lot of the people that ask me aren't even just kids like when they're like 14, 15 year olds ask me it's, I'm like oh jeez they don't know any better when people are like 20, 21 years old asking me like do you live off YouTube, is that your job? Of course not! Like, I've been living on my own for like the last four years, I have a car which is fairly alright car, I believe, if you know, don't say so myself, you know what I mean? So for me to think, for you to think that this is my main source of income, it's not, like I wouldn't even count it as an income, like the amount of hours that I put into YouTube is probably like, it's crazy, but it, it doesn't feed me, it's more like a hobby. If you see the thumbnail, that's basically me and my friend Charnel, basically, it, I think it's her thumbnail probably put in there, 9 to 5 versus entrepreneur life, something like that, and that whole footage will be near the end of the video, because I feel like it was a very good conversation and hopefully uh, this video will hopefully help a lot of you out there or see perspective I know a lot of people like message me and say I want to start a YouTube channel but I know their intention to start the YouTube channel because they want to be like Christian Guzman or I don't know someone that obviously solely lives off YouTube and I feel like if you start um, going into the YouTube game for that specific reason I kind of feel like you're doomed to fail and the reason I actually am doing this video in, in general like this whole income video is one because I get asked a lot Two, because I said obviously people, like younger audience that want to get into YouTube or feel like it's good for you to get into perspective. Um, but it's also down to the fact that because my birthday is tomorrow, I'm doing some self-reflection, you know what I mean? It's crazy, I'm not even sure how much of this footage is going to actually make to YouTube because literally I've probably been talking now unknowingly probably for about 20 minutes I'm not gonna have me 20 minutes just talking so I'm probably gonna crop and probably like pull out the most important bits for you guys anyway just pulled up at my house how's the fit looking people I got the, the top that my sister got me a while back I'm rocking my suede jacket again because you guys know I love it and also got the fancy watch that I like this wooden timepiece oh see when you get a new watch don't call it a watch call it a timepiece yeah what do you think of it I think it looks pretty damn cool this is what I'm gonna be wearing to go out for my birthday I'm not doing shit who you almost fell well then mate, can't have you guys falling over like that. Don't ask about the accent is because I don't know. Why I'm coming to you guys right now is not just to show you my fit, it's more or less kind of summarise this whole video and address some of the topics that I probably haven't covered yet. Uh, I spoke about it with Chanel which you will see in a little bit. You know what, let's just cut to that bit now and I'll come back to you guys and speak. Welcome to, <laughs> you pull me off now you tramp. Welcome to the Shani Show. TJ has put me on screen or camera, or however you want to say it or do it or whatever, however you want to put it, to ask, answer questions about business and put me on the spot. A lot of people watching like, why the hell is he even talking about business shit? But the difference is, I think it's kind of cool. Like people, I don't want people that are watching this video. A lot of them are quite young. I like them to kind of think out of the box and like not just think about doing what your kind of parents say, which is like obviously finish school, go to uni, get a job for someone, progress the corporate ladder. I think it's kind of cool how you've kind of not done that. Like you went to uni obviously, but then you, you wanted to do your business and way back when you were telling me about it, I had little confidence at first. Oh and my gosh. Like it, was a little, it was a little confidence, just like I didn't think- Three years it, in now guys. She, t she would tell me when she was younger that she's gonna be a millionaire and I was like, everyone says that. But like she's actually making progress to actually succeed. A lot of you always ask my job and you think it's YouTube but it's really not. I have a full time <laughs> job. Uh, YouTube is like a hobby that I do. So he says. 
I have a full-time job, I'm a website designer, and I often do work for Chanel, which is why she's here, for me to help her with her website stuff. But basically, Chanel being an entrepreneur, I'm keep saying that word, uh, I thought it'd be cool to like let her talk about the things that she's done in business, because she's really on it when it comes to business shit. What made you want to work for yourself? That's probably the first thing. Um, I actually started working for myself by accident. So I provide therapy for children with autism, and I actually started working as a tutor. Um, and previously when I did the same job role, I was actually employed by a council. Um, then I went and did the job again and a month in the lady said to me, oh, have you registered self-employed? And I was like, what do you mean? I know that's, that's a story of how I become self-employed. I think at first I was a little bit scared, but I'm always a believer that if something scares me, I'll definitely just push myself into it to just make sure that I'm not backing out of it just because of fear. When did you start your business? Like how long ago before you was able to pay your, for yourself? How long oh, you to like, gosh. yeah, basically from day one you made the business, how long did it take before you could actually like quit your job and actually work for yourself solely? I think that's a decent one, that's decent. I think that's a very decent job. Obviously I've always been self-employed anyway, so I have been my own boss since 2013, yeah, 2013-ish before it's been my own boss. Like sometimes I have to stop um, pay myself and obviously work, sometimes I carry on working. I do generally enjoy working with the children so it's in and out. I think it took about two years for it to truly be able to just pay me and for me to be able to just say, yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't have to work unless I want to. Um, and that's not because it couldn't pay me sooner, it's just because when you do business, you have to be really, really smart and you can't take a wage straight away. Lots of people. Yeah. Literally, you don't know how much you're literally quoting Gary and you don't even know it. because you. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> she's only just gone to the Gary V way, but basically, this for a while, you know. well, um, um, okay. if it's less than a year and calm, you sit yourself down. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing. I think even now, when I did start paying myself, I think that was even too soon. If I could go back, I probably wouldn't have done it at all. Because you make mistakes as well, and if you obviously take money from the company early, you don't have any kind of bucket or basket, you kind of, you take it from it before it's actually materialised. And I think, obviously, there's different reasons to why people start a company, and mine was never ever the money as such. And um, mine is to generally help children, so I feel like I'm taking money from it beforehand and kind of taking out of those, taking away from them children when I can invest back, make my service better, make the training better, make, make my staff better. I think if you're just doing it for the money, obviously it doesn't work. Yeah. How much staff you have actually? That kind of shows the kind of size, considering that your age, your, you want to say age? I'm 30, yeah, no, I'm joking. I'm 26 <laughs> years old. <laughs> Uh, so I started off with four members of staff in 2014. I currently have, as of today, I've actually just hired 10, so I have around 40, 45 members of staff now, um, which is really, really good. There was, a, there was a time when I had like 77, but I kind of learned that it's common sense really, it's quality over quantity. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of staff members that potentially couldn't get them work or they weren't really good at the job, but I just decided to take them on board to give them a chance because I like to give everybody yeah. a chance. Um, it's not very practical, so... Business, hard cut, you can't yeah. give everyone a chance. Not everyone's good at something. I don't really do the interviewing that much, and I have a lot of people that kind of help me out with it, because I am very much like, oh, she really tried, though. <laughs> What's your opinion on people that, you know, like in, from school days, people always say, like, um, when you're bad at something, work on what you're bad at. Do you, are you a fan of doing that, like, so you're trying to make yourself a well-rounded person in general, or are you more a person that, when you're good at something, just focus on that and just make yourself awesome at that, so that's like your niche? Um, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I definitely make sure that I'm good at everything, or I try and teach myself to be good at everything. The thing that I've learned in business is that sometimes my business can't wait for the stage where I'm good at something. So for instance, I'm not very good at numbers, and if you do business, the foundation of your company is literally numbers. Everything is based on the numbers. It's not based on how many clients I have. It is, but it's based on how much, like how that relates to the numbers, how the company can afford that, how feasible it is with the staff. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to make myself good at numbers, like a lot of time, because I, was, I just was in denial, to be honest with yeah. you, just to say that I couldn't do it. And now I've learned, get the professionals to do that so the company's looked after and while they're doing that then I can watch them and understand how they do yeah. it and then make myself better at it. So it's good to basically have a grasp of what it is but people that are better at it, just employ people that are better, one, it saves you time, yeah, definitely. time is money mm -hmm. and two, it's just always good to have a professional do a job well rather than have someone do it half half, half yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, it just gives you more time so that I don't kind of have that stress on me, I know that that's done properly but what I always do is ask them to explain what they've done. 
because obviously yeah. I don't, I'm not a stupid girl, I don't really trust you, like I need to know what you've done so that if I see you do something different in the future or I've read something and it doesn't correlate with what you've done, yeah. then I know that you're messing me around. So I think it's important to know the key factors of what you need to do, but just let the professionals do it if you're not good at it, don't show What other question I can ask you, we ain't gonna do it for long, literally, without even knowing it, we've probably spoke for probably about, probably eight, nine minutes already, no joke. That wow, one clip just was like, Decent, but I thought it'd be something different because literally fitness stuff gets like I enjoy fitness shit. Don't get me wrong, but like I feel like it's cool. Like because I want to be an entrepreneur at some point as well, work for myself. I spoke to Shana about a few little side hustles that I got going. I'm gonna be doing as well in the future, so stay tuned for that. But I always ask her for advice here and there, and obviously vice versa. And I do with my other friends as well. And the fact that you're actually look out for my YouTube channel. You keep saying it's like, <laughs> when's this YouTube channel coming? Just follow ABA Tutorship on Facebook at least. Yeah, if anything, we can just end it there for now, yeah. Then. And if you guys actually enjoy it, then I'll think about getting it back again and probably ask a bit more in depth. But this is more or less for you guys that are younger and to more or less thinking about entrepreneur, not just like getting to the whole work life cycle. Um, my motto is you can be whatever you want to be, just own it. So, like with my kids, they could be a vet, they can be, they could be a bin man, like I don't care. Just own, like own the company. That's oh, okay, that's what you mean, as in like, own it. Own whatever business own, you're getting to, so yeah. whatever industry, just make sure you, you own, own it. Own, own it. the practitioner, own, own it. So my final question is, can I have a loan? No. <laughs> she ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, people, peace out, hope you liked this video. I have no idea what is actually going before these clips, so hopefully that was decent too. But anyway, say bye to Chanel. Bye. See you in the next one. Peace. Hopefully you enjoyed that talk with Chanel. I feel like it, you know, even though it's not strictly fitness related or anything like that, I feel like it was a good talk. And the main thing I wanted to make sure this video didn't become was just a video talking about, I don't know, how to grow YouTube or how to make income from YouTube. That's not what I wanted it to be about. It was more or less just like business or career wise in general. How do you make a good income? How do you like get sustainable income from different avenues? Like for example, Chanel's on the entrepreneurial route, so her main income is either little businesses that she builds. I kind of went the nine to five route, but I do have a lot of other side hustles as well so I do like a lot of website design uh, graphic design logo design all flies and all that stuff obviously the income that a little bit that YouTube makes and various other kind of things I've done but I always try and keep my hands in different pots um, and as for the side hustles that I have none of those in total at the moment are enough to more or less subsidize me not having a job so that's why I still keep my keep my nine to five which is my main source of income not YouTube more or less just to obviously pay for the bills and stuff because for those of you that literally thought in any way or fashion that my type of my channel if you know it well could like more or less support the lifestyle that I live is very it's very naive like I mean, my lifestyle could not live off like the views that I get off YouTube so no that is not my main source of income before I disappear I'm going to show you guys the cake this is my birthday cake it's, it's pretty cool they told me they were actually going to get like something else added like hashtag chilling with TJ or something but to be honest I'm happy with how it looks now this is pretty cool I did not expect to get a YouTube cake um, I didn't expect to get a cake at all to be honest but I gotta say, I greatly appreciate the thought. It's very funny, and I don't even want to eat it because I just want to keep it like this. But yeah, I greatly appreciate that gift. Probably one of my favorite ones today. Probably one of my favorite cakes ever because it says YouTube on it. Didn't that cake look fucking awesome? Anyways, thank you for everyone that's watched this video. If you enjoyed it and you made it this far, please comment below. Hashtag, <laughs> I don't know. Hashtag escape the 9 to 5, I don't know, something like that. Alright guys, it's Sunday morning now and any memory of the 15,000 calorie challenge, I'm literally dressed almost the exact same part from trousers. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that sent me messages. Like literally I'm going for my Snapchat and I can't even reply to everybody because there's so damn much. I want to say is I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching this video. Hope this video in general was good for you guys anyway. I'm probably going to announce the winner of the 10,000 calorie challenge in the next video from this one. So you've got more or less from now till then. Um, to more or less go do what I said in the video to try and win. But anyway, peace out, stay in games. I'm about to go see my family right now because it's more or less Sunday afternoon. It's more or less chill because it's my dad's birthday yesterday and I haven't seen him since. So, peace. To prove that this is more or less like pure hobby, not income. I'm not going to give you the specifics, but say an average video for mine, like an average vlog that you're watching, say for example this video, it takes 30 days for like this type of video to make like £1.50 for me. And you're probably thinking, whoa, that's low. And you haven't even heard half of it yet. 
like if you think about the amount of time and editing goes into actually making these video like filming over a few days then the editing itself is like three hours then you think you gotta make the thumbnail all this kind of stuff hours and hours and hours i'm putting into it and then literally i have to wait a whole month for that one video income is one pound fifty so you think about it, that's crazy low right you're probably thinking teacher why'd you even do it just quit <laughs> but the thing is i'm not doing this because um for money i'm doing it because i enjoy this shit like i enjoy sharing my day to day it just like anybody though you do have highs and lows like sometimes i love doing it sometimes i'm just going through the motions but sometimes like the times when i really do love doing the videos is when i like i really enjoy the editing when i do something crazy like the 15,000 calorie challenge the challenge itself i wasn't in the mood to do it but the editing i enjoy thinking of different ways to try and make it stand out and be kind of cool and funny so I do this, like my day job is my main source of income and for the time being it will be. Like I don't have any, I don't really envision any time soon where YouTube would ever take that over. Like even if my channel was to rapidly blow up out of nowhere, I wouldn't quit my job for it because YouTube's not, in my opinion, sustainable forever. Like people that solely depend on YouTube, I feel like they may have a rude awakening one day. For example, recently there's been that, that kind of change where um, people are pulling out on doing ads, big companies, so YouTube creators are getting less money. Those people that like kind of quit their jobs to just live off YouTube, they're going to have a big hit now. So like their lifestyle may have to change a little bit to more or less account for that. So I feel like always have multiple streams of income. You know what I mean? It's, it's the smartest route. Like I don't just have my day job. I have freelance work that I do as well. Like I work for Shard now and I've loads of other kind of companies I do freelance work whether it's flyers logos websites wherever it is and then obviously the little money YouTube makes I get off YouTube uh, over like the month and then other different bits of income that I like to do and I'll soon be getting into doing creating kind of fun cool t-shirts uh, I don't mean like outfit and gym stock I mean more like comedic kind of shirts whether it be gym related or life related um, something like I don't know but yeah, you'll see that soon enough. Like, the main thing I hope you left this video with is not just th thinking about YouTube and how to, I don't know, grow on YouTube or anything like that crap. It's more or less a career or life in general when it comes to, like,